Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how I drew this dog's nose in pastel pencils. So I just wanted to uh, make a point of the fact that this is not a blue dog, it's a black dog. Um, the reason it's so blue is because I go in first with like a blue layer and then I will go over the top with blacks, blues, greys, sorry not blue, greys, browns and stuff to neutralise that blueness. Here's the reference photo I'm using. It was my competition winner, Luna. Um, I'm just demonstrating here how I use the colour picker tool in Photoshop to look at the colours that are in the nose before I make a start. What kind of separates a realistic looking drawing from a really realistic looking drawing is these really subtle colour changes within the nose. On the top here we've got more of the true colour which is the blues purples and blues just like in her fur here and then on the bottom where we've got the bounce light coming off the ground we have got more of a greeny brown and these highlights are actually bright white which is quite rare but we have got a lot of pinks in there as well so yeah don't just look at it as a nose like it's separate from everything else it's you have to kind of um integrates it into the fur around it because it's going to be all the same colours. So dark blues there and then these are pure black, the two nostrils that we see on dogs. There's no light hitting there. First of all we want to be making sure that the darks are dark enough. I'm just going to rest my hand on this bit of tissue paper because I've already done a lot of work there. Um, so I'm actually just going to go in with the black first. Oh, actually, no, I'm going to go in with a really dark, bluey, grey colour. This is the 1122181 one from Faber Castell. Just going to give it a sharpen. I need to order a new sharpener. All of my ones are really bad at the moment. So blunt. So I'm just getting down those the darkest areas I can see straight off the bat. So here we've got the darkest shadow part, oh yeah I forgot to say, for these really dark nostril parts, I always do them first of all, um, I use this soft charcoal pencil from Comte a Paris, and ignore that now, um, <laughs> it's the softest one they have and it's just so good for deep blacks, I haven't found any pastel pencil that matches it so that's the one I use. noses you really have to zoom in closely to your reference <laughs> to um, try and differentiate where the warm tones are and where the cool tones are. The warm tones are usually on the bottom, well the mid plane of the nose. So I'm just mapping that out now. Do -do 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 -do. You also want to get this line in first of all because it really helps you to help your brain to sort between the left and right side. Any colours that you see on this part of the nose, just carry them on down here because that's the skin that's underneath that fur. So you can always go over that with the fur afterwards, but having that tone underneath is really effective. It doesn't matter if you go too dark at this stage because with pastels you can always put the highlights on top. It's not like coloured pencils where you have to leave the highlights. <laughs> Sorry, I just realised that was completely out of focus. I hope that wasn't like that the whole time. <laughs> we shall see. I'm using kind of medium pressure here, not too hard, I don't want to completely fill up the tooth of the paper. As you'll see shortly we're going to use a blending stump to 
move that pastel right into the tooth so we can go over the top easier now here is where my main highlight is so I'm going to kind of leave that um, light for now really pay attention to those subtle colour changes so here it's kind of like a, a grey brown and then we've got here a blue tone getting those really subtle colour changes in is what's going to take your work to the next level don't worry if it looks horrible at this point it's bound to look horrible we don't put the details into the very last minute going over that black area to make sure it's still black here we have some orange bounce light it's never as bright as we want it to look like in our heads in the reference picture when we look at it it looks bright orange it's compared to that blue tone next to it however it's not actually that bright <laughs> using the color pick at all on the photo editing app really helps your brain to figure it out so I can't recommend doing that enough really When we see shadows sometimes we just want to put in a darker tone of the colour that's already there but actually usually it's a richer tone of that colour it's not just a darker tone so here I'm using a really rich blue to illustrate the shadows in places rather than using a dark grey for example Just filling up that first layer of the pastel mat using all the same techniques I've just explained and being sure to really pick up those browns and greens on the mid plane of the nose. So there we have the mid-tones and the shadows down for now. We're not going to add the highlights to the very last second. As Andrew, oops, she says as she picks up a white. As Andrew Tisha says, save your tonal best for last. Meaning add in those really small details at the very last second. Onto the second layer now, and what you're going to want to focus on for this one is blending those harsh colour changes together, so where you can see the blues and the browns and the greens, um, and we want to make it look kind of seamless. So what I like to do is take different kinds of greys and browns um, and kind of neutralise the saturated colours. I like to use saturated colours for the underlayer because they kind of show through. Um, the shape's really coming on now, we've got the mid-tones and the shadows in. As you can see just then, I was using a bright pink by Carbothello. Um, 
a really good tip that I learned. I can't remember who it was from YouTube. Oh, I can't for life of me remember. I'll link him below if I remember. I know it's a man. Um, if you put bright pink next to your highlight areas, so like your whites or your light pinks, um, for some reason it makes them stand out so much more. Literally just the tiniest hint of bright pink next to your highlights. Try it out. Don't go too overboard, literally just <laughs> a touch. But yeah, it's really made all the difference. I think it's because it kind of mim 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 mimics the sun bouncing off. I've got to the stage of the drawing now where I'm just kind of winging it. All hint of stages have gone out the window. Uh, here you can see me using a light grey to add in some tiny dots to suggest that kind of pattern on the dog's nose. Um, and being sure to really pick up on any blues that occur because getting those bounce colours are going to make the nose look really reflective and wet and healthy. And that's how we want our doggies to look. Also, pay attention to what colour your highlights actually are. Um, it can be tempting to just use a light grey or white, but most of the time they're actually light blue. Especially if the animal is outside. So, add your light blues to the places that need them. Um, colour I really like for doing highlights is um, the Caran Dash. Uh, I think it's rose pink. It's like a really light, almost white rose colour. Um, it just gives a little bit more of an edge to the highlights rather than just using a plain and flat white. And here what I'm doing, you don't have to do this, but taking a really sharp Derwent Light Fast pencil in Castle Earth and I am just drawing in that texture that I see on the dog's nose. They're like kind of, kind of like little hexagons I would say. Hexagons, is that a five shudders? Five shudders shape? <laughs> oh, math is not my strong point. So guys, here is the finished piece. I really hope you got something from this video and as always please let me know if you did because it motivates me to carry on with these videos. So hope you have a lovely day everyone and I'll see you next video.